Okay, next, we have a light board, which is behind me. What this teaches is spatial reasoning. It's a great uh, facilitator, if you will, to your math instruction that your computer does or where you leave off. And it just gives the kids a chance to be more tactile with these shapes. The back light really gives them a 3D dimension and allows the kids to experiment with uh, spatial reasoning. Now, when designing your classroom, it's important to be as creative and fun as you can. That really appeals to the students. So in this case, we got a wonderful colored painted backdrop. Again, another tape recorder. And again, another power link, like on the SNO station. And you can teach a reading goal. In this case, with the C background, you could do a biology goal. Or you can just put music on the device. It doesn't matter. But again, the goal would read, student will activate device one time in a five minute period. And again, they hit the switch, and you hear the music, and a lot of times it can be set to a specified amount of time where the device will also turn off by itself. So this one could be a biology goal, a timing goal, and it's sure to work in your classroom as well. Okay then, here we are. Here's a space setting behind me. It's right adjacent to the biology setting with the C that we just came from. And this, it's connected with the one power link where when you hit the button, you hear the music. And the thing about this is not only can you put a tape about space or something to teach a space goal, but these two power links are hooked together to where only one works at a time. So if you have a student here and a student at the other button, it also can teach a social skill, such as sharing or taking turns. A great station for your classroom. The need for assistive technology is crucial in a special needs classroom. You have to find the right device that the student can communicate on, because that's what it comes down to, is communication. So let's start big. This is a big visual machine that a student can hit a button on to say, I'm thirsty or I need to eat. Or what if the student doesn't have good dexterity in their fingers to hit this little button? Well, that's when things such as this gooseneck thing come into play where they can just hit the gooseneck and again, that you'll see the dial spinning around. Or if they can't hit the gooseneck, you can always give them one of the jelly bean buttons, which is what we've been using on our computers. So these are big, bulky items for those that need the most amount of help. Now for those that have a little more dexterity, maybe not with their fingers, but with their knuckles, here's a communicator. I would like to play with the ball. And what you do with something like this, as you see we've got a ball, music, computer, mirror, when they hit the ball, you reward them with the concrete object. Let them play with that. Then you can give it back to them again. Look at myself in the mirror. And if they want to see themselves in the mirror, you reward them with this. This teaches communication, two-way communication, like a cause and effect sort of thing. And lastly, if your student does have good dexterity, you can give them something like this. It's very compact. You can fit a lot more on it. And um, bathroom. you could put different notes on there. That one said bathroom. Or if they're in need of help. I need some help. They can also indicate that. So as a teacher, I've learned to use the right device for the right student. Well, any special needs class is going to need a symbol center. We call this the writing center. But basically, this is where we teach communication. I call this concrete communication. This is where you say, do you want this or this? If they look at this, then you would obviously give the student that item. But it's not always convenient to carry two concrete objects with you. So we try and wean them onto pictures, which are symbols. We say, do you want this or do you want this? Well, of course, if they pick the shaker, we're going to reward them with the concrete shaker once again. But our ultimate goal is to teach students the abstract, which is this. We equate meaning to this abstract symbol, which is five. 
but we teach special needs students with concrete objects. One, two, three, four, five, and we have the abstract symbol underneath. So they understand the concept of a concrete five along with the abstract symbol five. And ultimately, communication is the number one thing we're looking to do in teaching special needs kids. Okay, next I'd like to draw your attention to the Music Center station. In this station, you can see we have a disco light behind us and floodlights on me. What this does is it animates me and draws the students' attention towards the front of the room. Now, while we're having fun learning English, math, and science to music, what we're going to do is actually influence the right side of the brain because most other academics that you've seen only influence the left side of the brain. Be sure to get yourself a guitar or a piano or a CD player if you're not a musician. And most importantly, get your students some handheld instruments so you can work on fine motor skills while you're learning this way. And one more important fact, learning music when you're young actually improves your spatial reasoning when you're older. It's called the Mozart effect. So you learn music, you learn math. And finally, I'd like to play a little song I got to play on national TV one time. I like the color blue. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. I like the color blue. Do, 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 do. A number one hit, I believe. Now, when it comes to different forms of assistive technology, there's much more to it than just these little handheld devices. It also includes a wide array of big equipment. This equipment is used for ambulatory skills or standing skills. This is important because it slows the progress of muscle atrophy. It also promotes muscle building in our students. And more importantly, it helps the student assist us when positioning them as well as maybe one day even stand on their own and ultimately one day walk on their own. Now our first piece of equipment is the Riften Mobile Chair. These chairs are important and they're the first step when we get an SH student because they come with a lot of support, a chest strap, a lap belt, various abductors, a tray, side abductors, and this is all designed to give them maximum support until their muscles develop and they learn to balance on their own. Once they do balance on their own, we'll basically take all these apparatuses off and strip the chair down to a more common chair like this, which is very important because one, it develops muscle control for our students, and two, it puts them in the least restrictive environment. 